Info, I see your screen. You're good. I see full screen. Yeah, game on, baby. Nice. Laugh, Filippo. There he is. There he is. All right, cool, man. Hello, my friend. How are you? Ciao, amigo. Ciao. I'm doing well. It's good to see you here, and I'm nice. excited for you to present. What? How long did you think I was going to hang on there, man? Sorry. You weren't even watching, weren't you? Yeah, you zero. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you were pure, pure panic with Chrome. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So people don't uh, don't know, but behind the scenes, sometimes the streaming software that we're using, the speakers will crash their computer as soon as they share their screen. And so Filippo got a first row seat to the computer being crashed. And that's yes. why we threw this in. We improvised, man. We improvised. So all right. You are super cool at that, so it's perfect. Yeah. We can go with it. All right, I'm gonna let you get started and let's uh let's cruise. Okay. I'll be back in 20, 25 minutes, man. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much. So hello everyone. Uh, I'm Filippo and uh, I work as a CTO at Grand um, and I am also a co-founder at uh, Prem. Uh, this is like the outline of my presentation today. Uh, so first I will try to speak about the AI personas uh, in the, I mean, in the current ecosystem. And then like uh, the, my business uh, personal problems, I would say. Uh, and then, the, I mean, the obvious solution, given like uh, the title of the deck, uh, but I mean, theoretical, obvious theoretical solution, which is open source. And then like the challenges that you can face uh, when uh, trying to uh, use these uh, open source LLMs that uh, a lot of people are talking about. And then like uh, as a final point, uh, I will uh, give like a, a practical solution uh, to these uh, uh, problems. So uh, starting from like uh, the ecosystem and the different groups uh, in the AI ecosystem, the first group, uh, it's obviously about the data scientists and the researchers. Um, I mean, they, they, they are the ones that actually know about math and, uh, and, and, and statistics. And without them, we wouldn't be here speaking about uh, LLMs in production. Uh, then the second group is composed of MLOps engineers. I mean, they, they, they are the, the guys that uh, bring, I mean, take the model and bring it to production for real. Um, and uh, obviously, I mean, like, uh, th they are the, the serious guys. And uh, uh, then, like, the, 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 the last uh, group, it's about, like, the web developers uh, that are, I mean, they are having a lot of fun building new AI applications uh, using uh, Langchain and uh, Yama Index. Uh, and I mean, luckily they are here to help us out because uh, otherwise uh, all the uh, web applications will be like uh, based on Streamlit or uh, Gradio. And I mean, this consolidates like in, the, in a single spot. Why? Because basically like uh, uh, I've been, uh, um, I started my career as like a data scientist. So I was uh, fine tuning and training deep learning models. Um, and then like uh, due to the fact that we were a small team, I had to uh, learn how to actually bring them to production. And so like uh, I entered the rabbit hole of MLOps engineer and all the tools and frameworks related to that. To that. And uh, finally, I mean, like it's uh, uh, more than one year now that I work as a CTO. And in that case, I mean, uh, you, you touch and, and you have like big, I mean, the full picture on, on the entire um, tech stack. And uh, obviously, I mean, like you, you, I, some issues that I w was not expecting to, to face, for example, related to UI and UX. Actually, like they, they, they are super important and like uh, front end development, it's more, uh, it's harder than expected, uh, I would say. Uh, and, uh, and yes, so I mean, like uh, um, I've been, let's say, facing a lot of issues uh, during my career and uh, um, like solving one problem after, after the other, basically. Uh, but still today, I have like uh, big issues. Uh, and like the main one is that uh, I cannot use OpenAI. And it's not because uh, I am Italian. Uh, it's, uh, it's, I mean, like the, the, the main reasons that uh, I'm dealing with the sensitive data. So uh, like very sensitive data and uh, on-premise infrastructures. So in this case, obviously we cannot use third party uh, providers. Um, and like, we have like a big limitation considering like how good actually ChatGPT and GPT-4 are, okay? And uh, for this reason, uh, I mean, after like uh, the first release of ChatGPT, uh, just a few months after, uh, we know, uh, we know, I mean, we all know what happened. So uh, like the madness started in the um, open source community 
and all these, uh, like, I mean, uh, incredible animals have been out. So from Yama, Alpaca, Dolly, Koala, Falcon, etc., etc. And uh, due to the fact that like there was this uh, huge um, hype on Twitter, I started to dig into uh, actually these models and see like if they could actually work uh, in a business uh, use case, so, like a production use case. Okay. Um, but I mean, it's not uh, as nice uh, as, ex- as, uh, as expected. Basically, as always, I mean, things seem super, super cool and nice, but in the end, I mean, th- th- you face a lot of challenges and I will show you like, I mean, I will give you like some problems that I faced. So like the, the first one, obviously it's about quality. So, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, it's like a joke, of course, but I mean, the number of models beating GPT-4 on Twitter versus the number of models de- uh, beating GPT-4 in reality, uh, what I can say is that um, um, data sets are one thing. I mean, like, uh, and we have, I mean, I think that uh, the community is improving day by day in terms of benchmarks, but then like uh, empirical evaluation is another one. Uh, and of course, like things, uh, uh, I mean, like comparing the, the, the current uh, open source models with the GPT-4, it's a bit uh, too drastic, I would say, uh, at least right now. But progress is like going amazingly. Um, and like for uh, this, uh, let's say, I mean, um, for each problem, I will try to give some tips and tricks. And for this uh, specific problem, I mean, like the first starting point that I want to say is that specific, I mean, in, in a single specific business use case, you don't need the AGI, okay? So, uh, you don't need like the capabilities and the reasoning of GPT-4. So it's not a big deal, even if uh, uh, these models are not as good as uh, GPT-4. Then like another, uh, I mean, error that I have been doing like a lot during some, during some uh, evaluations of these models, it's like uh, about prompt engineering, but not in the sense of like defining the good prompt in order to have like the correct result. It's more like the fact that each model has been trained on, uh, on different data sets. Uh, these open source models, I mean, and uh, obviously, I mean, each uh, each one of them has, uh, I mean, the, the team behind each one of these models has done like different data processing and data cleaning. And uh, uh, obviously, uh, there are different prompt templates for each model. So when you do evaluation or like you test uh, for the first times, like these models, try uh, to be careful and, and read a lot the documentation and how these uh, models have been trained. Uh, then, like another uh, uh, tips and tricks or like suggestion is that uh, um, a lot of, I mean, um, for uh, a lot of uh, question answering use cases, uh, you can actually use like uh, these uh, 7 billion Q4 models uh, coming out of uh, the community. But uh, obviously, like they have a, a big limitation in terms of context dimension. So uh, given the fact that, uh, I mean, they, they given this limitation, you need to be careful in terms of uh, uh, creating uh, the right uh, dimension for the chunks. So um, obviously, I mean, given this uh, s- small prompt that you can put there, um, you need to be very careful in in in, in this sense. Okay, uh, and like th- then my suggestion is uh, um, related. I mean, the, the second point it's related to the first one in the sense that just use sentence transformers, uh, which is uh, I mean uh, fast and and good enough for these use cases, uh, and uh, and also it handles like a small context. So. Um, I mean, the, the combination of the two in the end like creates like a, a talk to your data a solution that actually works fine, I would say. Um, then like, uh, I mean, if you really need, uh, go for uh, fine tuning, but uh, I would stay away from that as much as possible, uh, which is, I mean, it, it's not that it's complicated, it's that it's cost intensive and like you need uh, um, a lot of experiments in order to do it right. Uh, and. Uh, if you can, I mean, uh, if uh, your use case just uses embeddings, uh, keep going with embeddings. I mean, don't complicate or like, I mean, if you enter the fine tuning planet, then like uh, uh, it's difficult. Uh, I mean, like uh, you, you will have to maintain a lot of stuff and like you, you will uh, have a lot of drawbacks. Uh, um, in, in, so like keep, I mean, keep it simple and use embeddings as much as you can. Then another problem that I faced is about hardware constraints. So. I mean, I saw this message like uh, too many times lately. Uh, and uh, the, the, the main reason is that uh, in a on-premise infrastructure, you don't have like the latest super cool GPU with 80 gigabytes of, uh, of, of memory. So you need uh, to like adapt yourself and like for a, I mean, uh, let's say proof of concept, you cannot like uh, start uh, distributing the model uh, on multiple GPUs. I mean, you, you, you need to start simple. And, 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 and for this reason, I mean, like my, my, my main suggestion is that start from the simplest model, the, the smallest model, model possible, 
to test your use case um, in an open source manner. So, and, and also like, I mean, give bigger model doesn't mean better quality. So on the left, you have like an example, uh, which, I mean, you see Dolly, uh, 12 billion failing on a just, I mean, a low uh, uh, quest. I mean, it's not even a question. It's like just a, a low explanation, uh, exclamation. Uh, and you have like a, the, the, as an answer, like the, the welcome message from Stack Overflow. Um, on the other side, instead, there's Vicuna 7 billion Q4, and uh, it explains like very well like the difference between nuclear uh, fission and fusion. So, uh, it, I mean, it all depends. So, but 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 in general, I mean, and this like uh, of course I did these screenshots and I found the specific uh, uh, failure for Dolly and like the specific specific good answer from for Vicuna in order. I mean, for, for the uh, sake of the presentation, but the message is general. So. Uh, start very small and then like uh, go, I mean try to to to, to see if like uh, uh, the, the small model can fit your needs and then go go bigger uh, 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 if you have like limitations on on the first one. Then uh, like problem frame. So I mean let, let let's assume let's create this scenario now in which you are like I mean uh, checking on Twitter the new latest updates and you see like uh, all these new models super cool going out. Uh, and they, I mean, all seem to, to beat the GPT-4 or like at least have a good quality. And then uh, the day after you say, oh, okay, let's, uh, let's uh, speak uh, internally with my team and say, okay, well, let's do it. And I mean, like, let's try them out and see like if we can actually use them in, uh, in our use case. Uh, and uh, like then, of course, like the first thing that uh, your boss or stakeholder says that, okay, give me like uh, an environment where I can test it. So like uh, create a POC, create like a microservice, do whatever in order to, for me to test it, no? And see like if the quality, it's actually good uh, uh, as, as you think, no? And then this is this is what happens. I mean, uh, and I think it's, it's I mean, tempers always uh, in the AI industry because we are very used to, 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 to like bad developer experience. Okay, uh, but I mean, these are the, all the steps, the, the, the two screenshots that uh, I put uh, behind the memo is that, uh, I mean, all the instructions in order to run uh, um, Open Assistant 30 billion SOAR, on the other hand, is like uh, the, the installation process in order to run uh, like uh, um, a, a simple 7 billion Q4 uh, model. So, I mean, obviously like we are, we are very used to, to, to bad developer experience, uh, uh, but I mean, it's, it's, it's not nice. Uh, and, and like in other industries, I mean, like in other tech industries, these things are not happening. Um, so we are, we have like low standards, I would say. Uh, and uh, yeah, like, I mean, in terms of tips and tricks, not much to say. I mean, like just uh, keep calm and uh, maybe the, the, the next day it will work. Maybe not, uh, who knows, uh, but uh, I mean, uh, you will see. Okay, given uh, independent, okay, independently from, uh, I mean, the data, data type that you have to take care of and uh, like uh, privacy concerns that you have, still, I mean, going for the open source and do like, and do, like uh, the first step towards that, it, it will for sure bring benefits on the long run. And uh, it's all about inference and cost. I mean, uh, if you don't care about privacy. Uh, and, and, and this, I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's part of the, the reality of like uh, of going for an open source solution. Uh, and yeah, like going back to the to the uh, initial slide, um, obviously, I mean, like these three components are part of a complex ecosystem. They work alone, but they work together well. I mean, like uh, from a broad pers perspective, but they are also super different. I mean, and it's different. I mean. In order, they have different mindsets. They have like uh, uh, different uh, attitudes, and and uh, like uh, it, obviously, I mean, like creating like a good communication across for these three groups, it's very complicated. Uh, what we are trying to build at Prime, it's like a, a super simple, open, developer-friendly ecosystem in order to handle that. And uh, so, uh, like in terms of, uh, I mean, for the data scientists, we will uh, soon uh, release uh, fine-tune capabilities. Uh, uh, similar to uh, how OpenAI does. For DevOps engineers, you will be able to run in a few, com in, in few comments and clicks uh, a production-ready container. Uh, while for web, web developers, I mean, just run Prem with a few comments or uh, locally with the desktop app, and uh, you, you can keep going with the, your long chain integration and just uh, switch the base URL to uh, your server IP or like a, an, another instance, I would say. Uh, I have a small video prepared for that, which is the same that you will find in the GitHub repository. Uh, we have like both the desktop app and 
the um, server installation, which, I mean, it's like an installer script that installs all the dependencies and it runs like a Docker Compose. Um, you, you can, I mean, with just a few clicks, run a service and then integrate uh, Langchain accordingly. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, like we, we expose only a few services now. We are like still in beta alpha phase. Uh, we are looking for help, of course. And, and uh, I mean, but, but, but soon we will expose more services and we want to go multimodal in the sense that not only LMS, but in general, like all the models. Um, and yeah, this is like, uh, I mean, you can try it out on GitHub and uh, there, there are like all the instructions in order to install it or to run it in your server infrastructure. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, like uh, starting now, I mean, uh, we start like uh, right now the Prem challenge uh, with the price of like uh, 10,000 plus dollars. Uh, and it will last until like, I mean, it will last for two weeks. Um, you can check uh, on GitHub uh, at this link. Uh, I think that uh, Dimitris will share it with you, like probably like in the uh, later, uh, and and uh, and we will like do a blog post uh, after this uh, um, presentation. And uh, yeah, I mean it's about composability. I mean try to build on top of Prem and see like how things work uh, in uh, only only using open source LLMs. We want to see like uh, developers doing what uh, they've done like uh, uh, few. Um, few months ago with the uh, challenges related to uh, ChatGPT and, and uh, OpenAI in general, like uh, layer and models. Uh, join us, I mean, like uh, you can follow us on Twitter. Uh, we have like uh, GitHub. You can, uh, I mean, enter in our Discord for any problem, uh, technical issue. Uh, I mean, uh, we are there to, to help you out. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can also check out our demo instance if you don't want to, to install uh, uh, the app in your infrastructure uh, at uh, app.prem.ninja. And uh, thanks a lot. I think that uh, I took less time than expected, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. That makes my job a lot easier then. <laughs> I mean, I'm saving you time, no? Nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait, I just want to clarify some things because you're giving out uh, you're giving out some money here, and you're not talking about small dollars. So, what's the challenge, and how much money can I win? I mean, uh, you can win. Uh, I mean, like uh, we need to speak with the CEO because I'm not like uh, in charge of like the accounting part. But uh, I believe that it's around ten thousand um, dollars, and it's like uh, uh, across the the best projects, I would say. And, uh, but th there are more like information about uh, the challenge in the, uh, in the readme uh, of that repository uh, with some examples in order to, uh, how to actually uh, get started with Prem so that you can uh, already see like how it works and uh, start building out of the box. Oh, that's awesome. So basically if we build, if we build an app with Prem, I'm looking at the challenge right now on uh, GitHub. I could probably even just share this with you all yeah actually and uh so if basically prem challenge uh done specifically for the llms and production conference i like that <laughs> what if a web app using many or one of the prem ai services and when is it happening starting today until june 30th it's a virtual thing you can be on a team or you can be solo, oh my God, up to 10K will be awarded to the final selected project. So basically it's like, if you can create a cool app with some open source models and vector database from Prem, then you're gonna be getting some cash thrown your way. I like the way that this is shaping up, man. This is really cool. Okay, now I threw the link for this in the chat in case anybody wants it and all right does it say how to how can you submit it uh, Yes uh, there's like um, uh, a link no, like a process. submission process uh, google form link um, basic steps I mean uh, just send us like uh, your github yeah, yeah. repository and uh, simple Boom. All right nice dude well I'm glad that you guys did that and I know that it is uh, it's something very cool and you're you're 
doing some incredible stuff at Prem. I really love it. And if anybody wants to know more about what you are doing at Prem, I will direct them towards this good old tab on the left-hand side that says Solutions. And you can go there, check out, where is it? Prem, 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 Prem. Enter the virtual booth and you get hit with some cool stuff from Prem. I love the project. I mean, I know you guys just launched a, a few days ago. And so it's cool. Like everybody out there listening, give them some GitHub, GitHub love because it's fully open source and you're trying to do some absolutely awesome stuff with it, man. So thank you, Filippo. Thank that you very much. Great, I think you may have the best slide that I have ever seen. I cannot use open AI, <laughs> not because I'm Italian. I got to give it up for you on that one. That was brilliant. All right, man. Yeah.